Hey guys, and welcome back. Do you remember I put that little community uh, poll up there on what I should buy next? And I was deciding between the uh, Osmo Pocket 3 and the new uh, GoPro. And I even threw in there about the possibility of getting a new iPhone. Well, guess what? I did a thing. I bought the new i14 Pro. So the other two still aren't out of the question. We'll have to see what happens later this fall. But after seeing this product come out, how could I say no? This looks awesome. Now, I'm going to be specifically focusing only on the camera, photos and videos. That's all I'm going to be looking at, and we're doing an in-depth review. And I'm going to show you things that other people aren't showing you, especially within the photos. So, without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. Now, honestly, you don't get much in the box. And part of the reason is for that, they are trying to cut down on pollution of the world, so they say. But anyways, let's have a look, see what we get in here. Oh my. Look at that gorgeous color. It is the deep purple color. And man, that looks awesome. I am so happy that I went with that. But yeah, so you get the phone and you get a USB-C to lightning cable and you get your little bit of uh, paperwork instructions. And because I am in Canada, we still have the uh, SIM tray, so you do get your little uh, key there to be able to access it. But yeah, so that's what you get in the box. Nothing too exciting. That's it. All right, for all you techie people, here you go. Video specs, boom. Camera specs, boom. How about selfie camera specs? Boom, there you go. Pause the video, you can go over it to your heart's content. Let's look at a more of a condensed version for the lenses. Boom. That's a little better, a little easier to understand. Apple has wonderful ways of describing things that a lot of people really don't understand what all these terms and technology mean. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get outdoors, we're gonna test this. We're gonna do photos, we're gonna do video, we're gonna do a deep dive into this and see how good the i14 Pro actually is for photo and video. So let's get outdoors and have some fun. All right, well, it's the next day. Wow, what a day it was yesterday. We got daytime photos, we got nighttime photos, we got daytime video, we got nighttime video. We're gonna go through it all. We got a lot to go through. Hopefully I can get through it in a timely manner. Now, the one thing I did wanna let you know about when I said, I'm gonna show you stuff that other people aren't showing you. Everyone's showing you these nice little pictures from the phones. They look great. Most pictures look great when they're tiny. So what I'm doing is I'm going to include like a 100% crop of each image that I took. So you can see close up where the flaws are, grain, artifact, all that. We're going to get into it. So without further ado, let's get into the daytime photos and have a look. So we're just going to kind of power through this. This is normal lenses here. You can pause the video so you can see each image in more detail and take your time with it. Then I'm gonna switch into portrait mode and you can see the difference on how that makes. Check out the crops. Then we're gonna get into a little bit of general photography. And again, we're gonna include the crops so you can look at the details of this. Then we're gonna get into some animals. Have a look, look at that eye, pause the video and look at all the detail that you can see within it. I think it did very well for daytime photos. Now, I know the photos went by fast, but I wanted to show you a wide variety of images and not just spend the time looking at one image in depth, but going through a bunch so you could see common problems if they carried on through different types of images. So as I say, pause the video and look at the crops, look at the main photo, and you can compare and you can see, especially when you start looking into the shadows and stuff, look for any noise, any artifacting, any kind of mushing out with it. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna play with the Apple RAW in the photo. Now, I did two versions, one with the 48 megapic, and then the other one, I did it as a 12 megapic, so we can see the difference. The one thing you will notice is the uh, RAW file is less saturated, less contrasty, it's more flat. Because the one thing I have noticed with the uh, Apple, it wants to increase sharpness hugely. In a lot of the images, it's way over sharpening. That's one of my pet peeves. It's over sharpening the images too much. Now in the raw, you won't get that. So look at this image here of the field that I took. 
then you can have a look at the crop of that. So you can see it's holding up well, but when you compare the field in a JPEG, then you compare the field in RAW, you can see the color difference, you can see the flatness to it. Now, if I get into this next one, this is the one I did at the 12 megapic for the RAW as well. Look at the train. Look at the difference of them side by side. You can see how one is a flatter looking image, less color, but the detail is roughly there for both. I was really surprised how well it comes out, but the detail is more so in the RAW file. That's why you use RAW because it has greater detail and a greater spectrum of light. You've got more in the shadows and you've got more in the highlights. It gives you more to play with, but you have to post-process it after. So that's the deal with RAW. All right, now let's have a look at some nighttime images that I did. And we start kind of at low light and then I move into dark. And the low light start, as you can see in a couple of them, the sun is hasn't set yet, others, it's like almost half an hour past sunset and it was quite dark out. So let's have a look at those photos as well. Now we're looking at portrait modes here with the crops. You can see as we zoom in more with the telephotos, the image breaks down badly. Now we're going to look at some general landscapes using just all the lenses and I included the crops so you can pause the video again and look at those crops and see how mushy it gets as the light goes down. Now we've just got some general type images and again I included the crops for you so you can see the low light. Now we're into night. Now it's dark out. It's a lot darker than it actually looks in the photo. Well there you go. That gives you a good look at the daytime and low light and nighttime photos. I think that gives a good representation and a good sample of images for you to check out and look at the details. Overall very impressed with the quality now, the next thing we're going to look at is macro photography, and I'm so glad that the phone has the capability of doing that because I love doing macro. So here I'm just playing in the garden with some roses. Here's the one times lens and the crop, and that is amazing. Here is the two times lens with the crop. Now you can see it's mushing out a bit. Here's the three times lens with the crop, and you can see that it mushed right out. So you have to be really careful, make sure that you get the best distance and you get your focus as accurate as possible to get your best results and get a lot of light in there and you can get some amazing stuff. All right, photos put aside now. Now let's have a look at video. So again, we did video in the daytime, low light and nighttime. So without further ado, let's get in to some video. Cinematic at one time. How is it when I'm moving around doing stuff? So this is also a test of the microphone. Cinematic video three times. How is it when I'm moving around? How is it? How's the background looking? How about an extreme close-up? Yeah. So we're outdoors. I'm kind of in uh, open shade area here. It's kind of like the front of a garage almost down at the animal farm. Thought I'd see if I could get some pictures that we can check out in detail to see how good they are. And I'm checking the audio on the microphone. How is it? It is a bit windy. That's why I came into this open shade and it's a bit protected because otherwise the microphone would be getting wind noise across it. So let's go see what we can find at the animal farm. No stabilization, walking. No stabilization, running. Stabilization, walking. Stabilization running.
4K 30 cinematic focus shifting. You can see how I'm shifting the focus from me to the bush in the back, and you can change it in post after you've shot the video. So you can change how you want the focus. What a cool feature this is in 4K. Okay, that gives you a general overview of some daytime video there. I just put a bunch of different clips together. There's no sense me putting audio over it. I wanted you to hear the audio from the iPhone itself as well, so you could hear the ambionic sound coming in with it. But that gives you a good look at some daytime video, and I think it was pretty good, and it was all shot in 4K 30. So, the one where I was kind of in the open shade, if you're wondering why the audio was so echoey, because it was almost like standing facing into a garage, so my voice was kind of echoing in there. But other than that, I think everything worked out quite well. Now, let's have a look at a cool feature that I love, and that is slow motion. Man, like normal, I'm the subject, so I found a swing and had a little bit of a playtime in slow motion. I think the effect is always so cool. I love the slow motion. So, anyways, now why don't we have a look at some low light video and some nighttime video. And I also did a, kind of a vlogging style with it at different times so we can see how the light affects and how the camera tries to adjust for it. So let's get into all that. trying some vlogging in a low light situation and I'm backlit in behind. So this is low light. We will test it out again when it gets darker. So how is it? Looks pretty good to me, but we'll see at the end of the day. All right, we're uh, probably about 20 minutes past the last video that I did. And this is a lot lower light. You can see the camera is really compensating that lighting to uh, make this nice and bright. But unfortunately, it's probably going to bring in a lot of noise and a lot of grain. Won't know until I actually get looking at it. But it looks like it's fairly stable in the back. It's not bouncing around too much. But this is low light. So we're about 10 minutes after sunset. It's now 5 to 8 in the evening. You can see how much this camera is compensating because sunset was officially at 7.30. So the background looks pretty good. It looks fairly stable, not bouncing around too much. But the lighting, I'm just going to do a bit of a spin around here and uh, the background will probably go really bright and my face will probably wash out because of the backlighting on it but yeah it, this is not representative to the actual time of day it is this is way way brighter so the camera is definitely compensating for that here we are videoing in the dark i imagine this looks like mush i imagine this looks grainy but we thought we'd give it a try anyways so do a little spin around and you can see it's fairly dark the camera is compensating again well there you go daytime video low light video and dark video and it was dark it was well over about 40 minutes after sunset and I was only getting a bit of light from some street lights but yeah so that's a good look at the video capabilities the one feature I really really liked was the cinematic focus shifting in 4k I can shift the focus back and forth and even after you've shot the video, you can go into the editor and edit it, and you can edit parts where you want to change focus. That is very cool. I really like that feature. So anyways, that was a good look at the video section as well. Now, my overall opinion on the iPhone 14 Pro for photo and video, I absolutely think it's leaps and bounds to what I have been using. And wow, a lot of this just blew me away at the quality of it. Now, I did include a lot of crops in there for the photos and stuff, so you can get in and see the nitty gritty. And there is some issues. There was uh, like the nighttime one of me with the three times X in portrait is not very good. It also didn't cut me out very cleanly. And that's one of the things in the portrait mode. It doesn't always clean you, cut and clean you out as best as possible. So be aware of that, that it's not 100% foolproof all the time. On the whole though, 
super impressed. I didn't edit any of the photos or video. What you saw came straight out of the camera. I didn't adjust anything. So I didn't want to bias it by me trying to Photoshop an image up and say, hey, look how good this is. And then you try and recreate it when you get yours and you go, mine's not even close. So that's why I don't edit. I didn't edit the audio out of the iPhone. I didn't edit the photos or the video footage. It is the way it is. So that's why you see the light changing all over the place and everything. I let the camera make the decisions based on the in-camera app. Now I have heard rumor there is a new app coming and I really hope there is because I'd like better control within their app. But yeah, overall, I'm absolutely blown away by the iOS 14 Pro and I'm so glad that I bought it. So anyways, I will be making another video and it will be a comparison between the iOS 14 Pro and the iPhone 11. You may wish for an iPhone 12 or 13 comparison to it, but you will get an iPhone 11. So that's it for this one. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do new videos like this, you get notified and are aware of it. So until the next time.